Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today it is time to look at another little Memorial Date event that Gaijin are doing with the Spitfire Mark 9 and its first flight. The event itself will be running from the 25th of February to the 28th of February and this is because 80 years ago an excellent exponent of the legendary fighter family, the Spitfire Mark 9, took her virgin flight and you can get some battle trophies because of it. You can either get yourself uh, the RP boosters for 3 to 10 battles or the SL boosters, 3 to 5 at universal backup vehicles or one day a premium account. I'm kind of surprised that they didn't add in camouflages to this one because there's actually a bunch of the Mark 9s that have some really cool camos on them, but uh, instead you could still get yourself some pretty cool prizes, you know, with the day of premium account or the boosters or the backups, all of that stuff is pretty nice. And at the same time, uh, they're actually changing the general dynamics on how these work, so instead of um, just getting kills, which has been how all of the other memorial dates have been done. The way that this one is working is it's uh, score 20,000 points in random battles where at least one aircraft from the list is being used. And it basically names all of the Mark 9s that are in game, uh, all of the different versions, the Israeli ones and also the British ones, the Soviet one and even the American one. So there's a bunch of them that's around. And also at the same time, uh, the Spitfire LF Mark 9C is 30% off right now. And also Plagueis' Spitfire LF Mark 9C is available once again for Golden Eagles. And so uh, both of those, the Spitfire LF Mark 9C for the Americans and also Plagueis' are available if you want to pick them up for a discounted price. And remember, if you want to buy some GE to be able to pick them up, you can always use my discount code and uh, you'll get 3% off and also my decaling game. So it'll give you a little bit of a boost and it'll also give me a little bit of kickback on the channel. The Mark 9 is a fantastic aircraft, incredibly fun to play, and uh, we'll go through them in a little bit of a review now. So there are two Spitfires which are on offer right now to purchase for 30% discounts because of the Memorial Day event. And the first one is the Spitfire LF Mark 9C. This vehicle is in the American tech tree and it has been there for an incredibly long time uh, when I think about it. This was the original Space Fire uh, when it came to the game. It was always very powerful and still is pretty powerful today, even if it comes up against a lot of vehicles which have way more powerful engines, so therefore have a much better straight line speed. But the LF Mark 9C is still a fantastic dogfighter with a ridiculous rate of climb, even the stat card showing that that is the case. This vehicle has access to the Mel in 66 which is an incredibly powerful engine as well and it sits at least uh, right now at 4003 uh, sorry 3416 uh, so you can see I just purchased this right now just to show you how much it is and to be honest that's not a bad price for this vehicle it has really good rewards on it when it comes to RP and also SL and at the same time with the restructuring of the American tech tree now it's much easier to be able to go through uh, the different uh, lines uh, if you have a premium vehicle so comparing this to some of the others that are around the BR you know you have obviously the P47M1RE which is going to be more useful in ground battles and naval battles uh, but maybe not as useful in air battles then you have stuff such as the na which goes off uh, every so often and the a2d which has a very specified role and also twice the price basically uh, than the spitfire lf i think if you're an air realistic player or an air arcade player uh, it may be worth picking up this thing uh, because it'll be great for a sell income and also it'll just be really fun to play. If you've ever played any of the Spitfire Mark 9s, uh, you'll understand how fun they are. You know, they have a really good power to weight ratio, they have a really good uh, maneuverability on them. They're just uh, kind of whole packages with only the issue being straight line speed on them. And also, once you run out of 20 millimeters, the 7.7s can be a little bit rough, but not a huge issue there. But the secondary loadout it does get a 250 so you can use it i suppose in ground forces but you have so many better options when it comes to the americans at 57 so it's very hard to pick it you know you have stuff like the bearcat at 57 the mauler even the ad2 these are way better 
than the LF Mark IX is ever going to be. But maybe as a air superiority fighter, it may be worth having a look at. For me, as I said, if you're interested in aerialistic, this may be worth it. Uh, it also has a bunch of camouflages on it that you can grind out. So if you are interested in stuff like that, like you have, of course, the blue Spitfire, which is beautiful, the reconnaissance one, and a bunch of others. By the way, the Mark IX's in general, Spitfire-wise, have a ton of camouflages on them. So if you like grinding out camouflage, and having fun with them that is the way to go so this is also an absolutely beautiful camouflage but yeah um so air arcade air realistic definitely worth having a look at it's a very good price for what it gives you all the other game modes probably not Plagueis' Spitfire is a little bit more of a tough sell mainly because of its price being at 6090 ge um, even after the 30% discount. So when it comes to the Spitfire LF Mark 9C, what you find here is once again 477s and 220s, so you're quite heavily reliant on the 20s of doing the killing blow on other vehicles, uh, but you do have once again the Merlin 66 behind you, and it is obviously very similar to the American one. The only difference between it really is what it fights, and uh, generally what lineups around it in naval and also ground. As we said in the American one, this one isn't uh, great when it comes to ground, or naval uh, you know it only has a 250 pound bomb and that's really about it so i would say this is much more of an air superiority fighter instead of anything else it's still going to be really good in air realistic and all of that good stuff but what i would say is there's a ton of uh, tech tree vehicles that at 5.7 for Britain are equal or even better than it. You know, the Tempest Mark V is a fantastic 5.7 vehicle. It's incredibly fun to play and just a beautiful machine and air realistic. You've also got the Spitfire LF Mark IX already in the tag tree, and it has the 50 cals instead of the 7.7, so a little bit more punching power. You know, you've also got the Griffin Spitz starting at uh, 5.7. These two are also fantastic as vehicles uh, if you've ever flown them. So it's definitely a lot uh, more of a rough time, I would say, buying this one compared to the others, um, which are about because of the cost and also because of its um, lack of, uh, I suppose, lack of efficiency compared to some of its uh, compatriots in the tech tree. I would actually advise like grinding through these instead of, you know, getting premiums because there are so many good aircraft in rank four for Britain. Tempests are fantastic. The majority of the Spitfires are fantastic. The Mark 16 is a little bit rough. Um, but the uh, the Seafires are a little bit rough because they're heavy, uh, but they're still fine. The Sea Fury is a great aircraft. And then these, you know, the Lancasters, the Lincolns, and the Shackletons, they're incredibly fun to play as well in their own specific ways. So if I was going to give a recommendation, the American one is definitely worth having a look at, but Plagueis's unfortunately is uh, definitely not up there. Now at the end of this video I thought I'd put a note um, basically because people have been asking me my opinions about this stuff the last few days and I wanted to kind of sum them up in an area um, so I can just point people towards them and this video seemed like the one which was uh, basically available to do so. So when it comes to what's going on if we have a look at the Russia and Ukraine conflict, uh, it is harrowing. Uh, I don't know how else to put it. It's very depressing, and it's very sad to see that some of these old ideas are once again coming back to the front line. The ideas of reforming unions which fell apart, and the ideas of basically loss of life for land uh, once again. I'm never a fan of any of this uh, when it comes to especially the modern day um, and it's really sad to see over the last few days and this is going to continue to happen as this goes on the amount of propaganda that is coming from both sides it is impossible to get a clear picture of what is going on According to one side, they're annihilating the enemy, and then according to the other, they're also annihilating the enemy. And it's being propagated by people who are actually millions, uh, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of miles away from the actual area itself. It makes me sick to my stomach 
that people are using this opportunity to profit off the loss of life and also to profit off of military actions in this way. It is actually disgusting. It makes me sick to my stomach. And this is talking about both sides. Propaganda is not good. It never has been and it never will be. Propaganda as an idea is designed to give you false faith. And what ends up happening is once that propaganda wears off or people figure out that it's a lie, you end up in a bigger hole than you were in to start with. The false hope is no good. It is not useful apart from for a short period of time. And then when the reality sets in and when you see people dying around you and you see everything just falling apart, you will be way lower than you would have been before. I really hope that people understand this. I've seen too many people excusing others for spreading false information about what's going on because it favors their side. It is sad, it is disgusting, and hopefully in the future, people will act in better ways. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Merciless Reaper, Jerry Provolt, Mega Dino King, Professor X1718, Orange Tail, Sakoshi Tiger, Teddy, John Ryman, Universe, Eugene's Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, Moxie B. Young, and Derek R. Barine, Lafouche, and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.